So I think it's easy to say that the title of this video single-handedly accounts for around 70% of the breakdowns I had during the second and third year of university. Hey everyone, how's it going? So this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a while now anyway, but I've started to notice that some of you guys are starting to ask me about it as well, which makes me think that a lot of you are coming to the end of your degrees and are starting to wonder what to do next. Or it might be the fact that you're just interested in biomedical sciences and you want to know what kind of jobs you can get into. Either way, I hope that this video can provide some answers for you because I remember that when I was doing my degree, I had no idea what kind of stuff that I could do with my, uh, what I was studying. And I just remember being so frustrated about it all of the time. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a brief background on my case first because it might be something you can relate to. Now if you've been following me for a while you'll, you will already know that I did my undergraduate in biomedical sciences at Newcastle University. And honestly I can safely say that from the very first year, near the end of the first year, right until I graduated, I was constantly plagued with the question of what can I do next? And I know for some people that's not the issue because they either know what they want to do or they're happy not to know. But for somebody like me, I just I just needed to have some kind of direction. So pretty much every couple of weeks, I would be going to see a different careers advisor to try and find out what can I do with my degree. Now, at the time, the answers I would get were in three different categories. The first was either carry on doing further education, maybe do a master's or a PhD, fine, but not everybody wants to do that. The second one was um, try and get accreditation, uh, bearing in mind not all universities are accredited, mine wasn't because my university was a research university. Some degrees are, I'll talk about that later. So either go into um, the NHS and do, for example, diagnostic work with them, or the third one, and this was by far the most frustrating, which was well, with a biomedical sciences degree, you can go into banking, law, accountancy. Oh my god, I remember walking out of quite a few of those meetings wanting to just, just knock my head against the wall because I was thinking, well, if I wanted to do accountancy or law or banking, then surely I would have done a degree in one of those things. And while I will still stand by what I say and think that that is a very valid point, having kind of gone through it and being able to look back now, I can say that there was definitely some merit to what these advisors were telling me. The reason is that biomedical sciences is considered to be quite a good degree, I mean whatever that means, and because of that a lot of different sectors look highly upon somebody who has this kind of degree. And I think the reason why they were giving me this option is to know that if I for example didn't want to pursue science or didn't want to pursue um, further education that I do at least have the options to do other things. So I guess what I'm about to say now is good for any of you guys who haven't studied studied biomedical sciences yet but are looking into it and that is the one of the best things and I guess the worst things but one of the best things about this course is that there are a lot of options so that's just something to bear in mind but having said that if you are watching this video and you think the way I think which is well I've done a biomedical sciences degree so I want to do something within the field then do not worry because there are plenty of things that you can do and I'm just going to talk to you about some and there are lots more but I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that you can do. So number one and I guess this is the most obvious one is to get a job as an actual biomedical scientist. What biomedical scientists tend to do is work predominantly in hospitals and labs and do testing on things like blood, urine, feces, tissue samples, bodily fluids, things like that and help the clinicians to work towards coming up with a diagnosis for patients. And although some people might consider this a not so glamorous role, for example if you aren't the kind of person who wants to deal with like urine samples all day, it's very important to say that without people doing these testings, there wouldn't be a hospital, there wouldn't be, you know, A&E or anything like that. So although on the surface it might not, not seem as glamorous, it's definitely a very, very rewarding and fulfilling career choice if you do decide to go down this route. Now, to become a biomedical scientist, you will need to be registered with the Health and Care Professional Council. 
And to be able to do this, you will first need to be accredited by the IABMS, which is the Institute of Biomedical Sciences. And I have talked about this in my big biomedical sciences Q&A video, but basically, if you go to certain universities that are predominantly polytech universities, you already get accreditation with your degree. However, if you, like myself, go to a research university, then you will need to do an extra year of training to be able to get your IBMS accreditation. And basically what this accreditation says is that you are able to carry out the testing and doing the actual procedures. And you know what guys, I'll link, leave a link below um, just to give you a little bit more detail. But the kind of roles that you can go into as a biomedical scientist are very varied. There are so many different subsets. So for example, infection sciences, blood sciences, hematology, virology, microbiology, histopathology, cytology, so many. So these are all different areas that you can go into within this umbrella of a biomedical scientist. So. The second area you can go into is pharmaceutical companies. To be able to get into the sector, you will often need a bachelor's in science, engineering, maths, technology, those kind of things. And sometimes going into the sector will require you to have, you know, either a master's or a PhD or something like that, but not necessarily. And also because these roles can be quite competitive, because, you know, they are considered quite rewarding jobs and they're quite well paid, I don't really want to put, bring money into this, but they are quite well paid jobs. They do often ask for you to have work experience. But the good thing is that some of the larger companies do provide work experience. And some of these I've just got them written down. So for example, GSK, um, Met Office and the Racket Bankisa? I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. But basically there are um, summer internships for undergraduate students that you can apply to. Again, I will link some useful links below, but what it says from what I've been reading up, um, these internships are usually an opportunity for them to talent spot and try and recruit some students for their graduate schemes. And I guess segueing on that point is that if you do want to go into pharmaceutical companies and you have just graduated, it is a really, really good option to um, do a little bit of a search on the different kind of graduate schemes that are available within those companies. And I should also add that um, if you have done biomedical sciences and you don't necessarily want to stick to the actual hard science, I think you can do ironically, I know I'm hearing myself like even say this, like you can do, for example, accountancy and managing and things like that within the pharmaceutical company. So I'm just throwing those options out there just in case you're interested. But like I said, linky link down below. So the next thing is a medical sales representative. And this is very good if you're interested in business, in sales, or if you've just got that personality for it. And this is definitely perfect for those of you who, like I said, do enjoy the sales aspect of things and you also have the medical knowledge. And very often, people who are medical reps, as they're called, are the link between pharmaceutical companies and healthcare. And again, I will have a link below, but generally, as a medical sales rep, what you will be doing is, I guess, liaising with medical professionals and hospitals and GP practices and things like that in order to try and sell your company's medical products. And you know what, it's really funny because as I'm making this video, the advice that I was given by my um, careers advisors is, is starting to make more sense. I guess when they said you can go into business with um, <laughs> a biomedical sciences degree, I took it as like, oh, like a completely different sector of business. But I guess medical sales rep is in a way a business, isn't it? Because you're selling things, but in a medical field. Anyway, I'm, I'm having epiphanies on camera. Let's just move on to the next job. So the next sector is scientific writing and communication. And this is perfect for those of you who love the science, who love the maybe the reading, writing side of it, but aren't necessarily interested in working either in labs or with patients. Scientific writers can be involved in research in addition to writing medical articles, medical news, as well as writing for business, the general public, or on behalf of different, for example, pharma companies. As a scientific writer, it's really important for you to have a really good understanding of the science and to be really passionate about the field. But in addition, if your main set of skills is to be able to write really effectively and also to be able to write things in a way that a general public can understand. So for example, translating really, really complicated medical findings into more simple and more digestible language for the general public. Then if that is your skill set, then I think this is a really, really good route to go down. Again, 
Link for more information will be below. So, your next option with a biomedical sciences degree is to be able to get yourself a place on a graduate scheme. Now, I already said that some pharmaceutical companies do offer graduate schemes involving different roles, but the NHS still also provides some of these schemes. Although a lot of these schemes tend to be involved with the management aspect of the NHS, it still will give you an opportunity to, you know, work within a healthcare sector. And in fact, my ex-boyfriend managed to get onto a NHS grad scheme and he, as a part of his scheme, he was being trained to be an NHS manager. And what was great about this was that not only did he get to go and be trained for the job, you know, as, as in like do the job as he was being trained, but as part of the scheme, he was also able to go and do, I think, two thirds of a master's at UCL, which was all funded for by the graduate scheme. And the reason why I say two thirds is because all of the taught modules are involved, but he didn't have to do a research part of it. And I'll leave some more detail and information about that below, but from what my ex was telling me, he found it extremely rewarding. So maybe it's something you guys could look into as well. So number seven on the list of things that you can go into with a biomedical sciences degree is clinical trials coordination jobs. So as a clinical trials coordinator, you will be able to manage different trials and different studies. Now, clinical trials coordinators are often employed by pharmaceutical companies, but not always. You can also get um, employed by, for example, universities and other research institutes. For example, doing my master's now, I have quite a few friends who are clinical trials coordinators and they work with some of the surgeons who work within the hospital that I do my master's in. Again, this is a really, really good role if you really like to get involved in um, you know, thinking about the research aspects of things, learning more about medical advances, but at the same time you don't necessarily want too much patient contact or too much work in the actual lab. But having said that, the few of my friends who actually are clinical trials coordinators do get the opportunity to actually go and speak to patients as well. So if you want a little bit of patient contact, but also, um, you know, the coordination side of things, then again, this is a really, really good role to consider. And finally, last but not least, and this is again an advice that I got given a lot, which I guess at the time I didn't listen to because I thought it was quite generic, but in hindsight, I think it's a very good option, and that is to go on NHS jobs and have a look at the A to Z option. A to Z option, sorry. I know some of my British friends are going to be like, Z is American, why don't you say Z? A to Z options. One of the best things you can do with NHS A to Z, Z, <laughs> is you can upload your CV and write, you know, some of the modules you've done and some of experiences you've had, etc. And by doing that, you can get emails sent to you for things that they think you might be eligible to apply for. So this is a really good option if you're not quite sure what you want to do very specifically, because again, leaves the options for you. And if, you know, you get an email saying maybe this job is a you know, you're eligible for it, you might be like, oh, well, I didn't really know about this job before, but actually it seems like something I'd be interested in. If you found this video in any way helpful, guys, please give it a thumbs up. And I've also got some social media links, either on this side or that side, and you know, my Patreon and Etsy and blah, blah, blah. So if you want to go and check those out as well, I will have links below. And overall, I hope you guys all have a good day. And if you have any more questions, then please leave them below. Until next time, guys, take care and I'll see you later. Mwah.